Hi guys, today I'm going to be unboxing Elsa from Frozen. Now, of course, since she was coming, I got a cold. And I actually got her several days ago, but I had to wait a bit because I had lost my voice too. So if I sound a little weird, it's because I still have a cold. Probably combined with an allergy since I'm in Florida and it's spring. This is my first order from Hobby Link Japan. I normally order from Ami Ami because that's the first website I'd found and I'd just gotten accustomed to it and it's very easy to navigate. But I couldn't find Elsa on Ami Ami because I missed it. Apparently, she was only up on Ami Ami for a little bit and then they took her down because Good Smile had some some licensing issues or something and so it could only be sold in Japan but for some reason I was still able to order it from Hobby Link Japan so I'm very psyched that I was able to do that because I would have been sad if I could if I wasn't gonna be able to get her so she comes wrapped in this tissue paper which is kind of nice it's kind of like unwrapping a present I've never gotten one of my figures that wrapped in this tissue paper before so that's pretty cool it doesn't have any special foil stickers to mark its authenticity, but it does have this little um, Disney mark in the corner. So here on the box, you can see the different poses that you can put her in. I hope that they keep making their boxes really pretty like this. The first box I saw that was this fancy was the Cardcaptor Sakura one, and then now this one. Usually they only do special stuff on their snow miku boxes and things like that all right so let's go ahead and open her up now normally there's like a clear sticker up here but today it looks like they have a frosted circle sticker all right well i thought it would be cool to use that uh knife letter opener but i guess it's not really that sharp all right, the long-awaited. I've been waiting for her to arrive for a while. Let's see. If you look inside, you could see um, a view of Arendelle. There's a nice uh, snowflake detail here. And here. And they've also got um, kind of like what they did with the Card Captor Sakura box, where it's partially matte and partially glossy to make it a nice effect when it's, um, you know, shining in the light. Alright, well there she is. Alright, let's get her open. This is going to be awesome. Uh, oh, okay, there's no tapes on this side. That's nice. Yep. Oh, I guess that's a separate thing. Oh, I can't get open. Oops. Okay. I want everything to explode out of here. All right, now for the main event. Let's see. She's got some plastic protecting her face, it looks like. Oh, that's interesting. 
hair's kind of like permanently at her side. All right. Her hair is a little bit yellower than I expected. It's kind of like um, like a dirty yellow. I don't know. I was expecting it to be more like white blonde, I guess. Another cool thing about her dress is that it makes her freestanding, so she doesn't need any support, and she won't have to have that hole in her back for the stand. She comes with a little snowflake attachment that you can stick on her hand to make it look like she's doing magic. So here's Olaf. His head rotates a bit. Um, his arms move a little bit, not very much. He comes with a little stand to help him stand up. The paint job on Olaf is actually really good. I don't see any paint where it shouldn't be, and it's very clean. The sculpt of her hair is really nice. It has a lot of detail of like the loose strands that kind of flow back into the rest of her head. And her braid has a lot of nice detail on it too. The only thing is her braid is permanently stuck to her side, so you can't really pose it or do anything different with it. But I guess that's alright. It does limit her arm movements just a little bit though. The, the painting detail of the snowflakes is actually really nice. It's very well done. Her cape is translucent with snowflakes and she has a lot of nice snowflake and glitter details in her outfit just like she does in the movie. She comes with a lot of arms to do different poses probably because you can't really move her body. She comes with three face plates, her standard happy face plate and her kind of sassy smirky kind of faceplate and her demure smile faceplate. Elsa has a new type of head base that's different from all the other ones, but don't worry, you can still use her with older Nendoroid parts. You're able to take out the neck joint and it easily slides out, and then you can attach her hair to an older faceplate with the attached head joint. Here she is with parts from Miku in her Yukata version. So as you can see, you can easily put her on older Nendoroid parts and customize. Her special blue base is really nice. It has a giant snowflake on it. It's kind of like the one when she's singing and she bursts snowflakes out from underneath her while she's singing her song. It's also very neat when you light it up underneath. Here are the instructions she comes with of how to attach all her parts. Here's that Arendelle background that was in the box. You can actually pull it out and display her in front of it. This is like the card capture Sakura figure with the cloud background. I hope that they start doing these for their figures because it's really cool to have a background that you can pull out and pose the character in front of it. Overall, I think she was really worth getting. I like all the little details that they've put in her, like the creases in her dress, the snowflake painting and the detail in her hair and she's very cute. She's not very flexible because of the way her dress is made so she's not very poseable other than moving her arms and head around but Nendoroids are typically pretty limited in their movement anyway. Well I hope you enjoyed this review and thanks for watching!